Hey everybody, I'm Simon Harris and welcome to the latest episode of the vlog. So all of you will be very aware that it's Cam this week. The Dentsu lot uh, is down in the south of France and I understand that we're positioned directly between Google and Spotify, so what a fantastic place to be. I haven't made it this week, I've been really, really busy at work, but it's been a fantastic week, I've got lots done. Um, I think one of the most interesting thing about Cannes actually is all of the kind of rumours that uh, bubble up throughout the week. Uh, there's been one really interesting one between a large uh, telco and one of the largest ad tech companies in the world, and that's what I want to talk about right now. The biggest rumour, um, which was broken, I think, by an online uh, publication called Cheddar and then substantiated further in the Wall Street Journal um, a day or so ago now, was that AT&T, the US telco giant, um, is in talks to acquire at Nexus. Um, now, the figure that's been banded around has been uh, two billion. I'm gonna go with the one that was quoted in the Wall Street Journal, because I think they're a very legitimate source of business information, which was uh, $1.6 billion um, for AppNexus. Um, and that's kind of interesting in itself. That's 10% um, less than I think AppNexus were um, valued in 2015, I believe it was, when I think it was news invested in them. So that kind of 10% drop uh, in itself is interesting, but it's been the talk of the town. Obviously, um, AT&T have um, just bought up um, large media companies, so I believe the name of Time Warner now is going to be Time Media. And I guess that next is a smart acquisition for them, right? They're looking for um, a way to deliver ads into that kind of amazing content that's created by Time, um, which is enriched with the huge amount of um, of telco data that um, you know AT and T sit on, and an app Nexus um, may well be the the kind of right platform to do that. Um, I think there's a number of reasons why this might happen. Actually, um, the first I've just mentioned um, strategically, it makes a lot of sense, right? Um, app Nexus has a buy and a sell side solution. They're very well integrated because the developers from the buy and the sell side actually sit together, um, so it's fully integrated. You. One would imagine you can pipe telco data into that quite easily. Um, I think also, um, AppNexus could have um, IPO'd 18 months ago and they haven't done, uh, which kind of suggests to me that maybe they were waiting to be bought. Certainly they had the documentation ready to, to IPO, uh, I think it was just before Christmas, yeah, like 18 months ago now. Um, and I think the third thing, and, and maybe I'm reading um, too much into this, although this is a rumour, is obviously um, Brian Lesser, who is now um, heads up what AT&T have dubbed their ADCO, so their advertising company, was obviously on the board of directors at AppNexus. So the kind of stars are aligning on this one. To me, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think it would be a great acquisition for AT&T. Um, AppNexus is a really smart business, and I think um, this will help them, uh, kind of help take them to the next level if this does happen. Um, whether or not it helps, um, you know, AT&T and AppNexus uh, compete with the kind of Googles and Facebooks of the world on a global level, I think that remains unclear. Obviously, AT&T is dominant in the US, not so much outside of that, but it certainly all looks very, very positive. Um, I mean, I, I would caution though that these things haven't necessarily panned out um, previously, like you just have to think back to 2015 again and the revised Verizon acquisition of, of Oath. Uh, that hasn't really put a dent in the universe as such, but I think this time around this could be different because of the, the media assets um, that AT&T have at their disposal and the strong offline media assets they have at their disposal as well and the, the strength of the AppNexus platform. So I think this one could be different. Um, I hope I'm not proved wrong and it will certainly be an interesting story to watch. Okay, so the other massive news this week was the announcement of the Ozone Project. So for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, the Ozone Project is a collaboration between News UK, uh, The Telegraph and The Guardian. And these guys are banding together to start up a new venture. And this new venture basically aims to kind of compete with the Facebooks and Googles of the world. So these guys are going to pull their inventory. Uh, but they're also going to have a standalone sales team, presumably with their own P&L as well. And basically, these guys are going to to sell this this network, which the Ozone Project um, has created. Um, 
It's said in the UK to have a similar reach to Facebook um, and also um, part of the idea behind it is to make sure that more money goes um, direct to, to the media owners, so in this case the, the Guardian, the Telegraph, the Sun, the Times etc, um, which kind of makes a lot of sense. Obviously the Guardian in particular are out in the public domain a lot talking about the um, what they call an a, a tech tax or, or you know money being taken out of the supply chain that doesn't make it through to um, journalism, which is obviously very important by the way, so I don't want to um, be seen as belittling that. Um, I think it's a really interesting interesting move. Like, if I'm honest, like the I'm gonna put this nicely, the history of these alliances isn't good. There was um Pangea in 2015 and that, that just hasn't, to be honest, really, you know, moved the needle at all. Um, you know, the the Juno project kind of um, fell by the wayside. That was too hard to make uh, work. So obviously it's very positive that the ozone projects uh, come to market. But if I'm honest with you, um, I can't see how this will shift the needle. The, the Pangea projects kind of tried to do something similar. Maybe it's slightly different. Maybe this is slightly different. I don't know, um, based on the kind of press releases that I've read. But that didn't really that didn't go go great. You know, it hasn't. Um, unfortunately, and I do mean this. Unfortunately, journalism is massively important. It hasn't. Um, you know, pushed more and more money um, into into these great news properties. Um, and I think part of the reason for that is um, collaborating around media is, to me at least, it, it feels like, um, you know, it's not really the point. Like, Facebook and Google, um, you know, aren't winning 90% of um, all new digital ad spend because of their, you know, fantastic media properties, right? In fact, you know, if you think about the, the quality of media on YouTube it, over the past 12 months and the problems that they've had, that's really well documented. They're not winning on the quality of media, they're winning on the quality of their audience um, and its accuracy and that just makes it very, very easy to, um, for advertisers to, to buy. So like, whilst the overall scale of the, the audience that's offered by the Sojourn project might be analogous to Facebook, you know, unless there's a strong data proposition that goes along with it, I, I, I can't see it working super well, unfortunately, um, which is a shame. Um, Andrew Casale talks brilliantly on the, the importance of uh, identity and, um, you know, the fact that currently it's a, a competitive advantage for the kind of Facebooks and Googles of the world, which is why I think that the ID consortium um, is so so important and um, you know it's great to see actually that the ID consortium and the the IB proposition are, are coming closer together and um, actually that's something I want to talk about in the next vlog but you know I wish the ozone project well but you know uh, past performance of other similar propositions suggests that um, they might struggle a little bit but hey what do I know Okay guys, that's it for me for now. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this episode of the vlog and you haven't done so already, hit subscribe on YouTube. Um, if you disagree that with what I've just said on the Ozone uh, project, and if you think it's gonna be a roaring success, let me know what you think in the comments. Equally, if you think I've got it wrong on AppNexus and AT&T, and you think that when that happens, it'll be a disaster, also let me know in the comments. I think the debate that's springing up around these vlogs is um, super positive. It adds um, transparency to the ecosystem, and I, I think that's a really good thing. Um, this will be the last vlog for a couple of weeks. I'm gonna be in the US, uh, firstly on holiday, and uh, then on business over on the West Coast. Um, so, there won't be one of these for a couple of weeks, so you get a bit of a summer holiday. Um, I should be a couple of uh, shades browner when I come back, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.